Do you have specific tips, like one or two tips per tool that people can go out and implement right away? Like for instance, when I first reached out to you, you uh, gave me some really good feedback and you told me that I should have connected with you on LinkedIn before the meeting and not wait until afterwards. Oh, yeah. You know, so little tips like that go a long way. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to elaborate on that or share anything that you have with Twitter or LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which you've already shared so many, but if you can think of anything top of mind, that'd be great. I forgot about that piece of advice, and I do know why, I remember why I told you that. Yeah, so here's a, here's a great um, best practice that we teach uh, our sales reps and marketers as well. For, well, actually, anybody who touches the customer. How about that? Anybody who touches the customer. And um, we actually scheduled uh, a meeting, if I'm not mistaken. And then we spoke, and then I asked you, why didn't you connect with me on LinkedIn? And you said, your answer was, is I usually like to wait till after we have a conversation, and then you know, we can connect on LinkedIn. Yeah. And I said, yes, but what if I had canceled that meeting? All right. And so that's what we have to be thinking about. So um, as a best practice for sales people and sales leaders, here's what I would do as a sales rep, write this down. Literally, you you're going to set up your meeting and you're going to invite your sales manager, sales director, sales VP, all of them, one of them, two of them, get a couple folks into the, into the, into, into the fray. You're then going to send, at the moment that you send that meeting uh, invite out, that you've booked a meeting, you're then going to go to their LinkedIn profile and you're going to add them as a connection. You're going to personalize it. And you're going to personalize it saying something like this. Hey, Carol, thanks so much for um, scheduling some time to meet. I'm looking forward to uh, our discussion. By the way, as a, a, a way to apply a face to a name, I thought it would be appropriate for you and I to connect here on LinkedIn so that you have a good opportunity to be able to see uh, more information about who I am and, and see my face. Now, eight times out of 10, the buyer usually uh, connects because they've obviously spoken to you. They're obviously booking a meeting. Now, let me ask you this question, Carol. And, and it, I, you could even use the um, scenario of how many times you try to get me on the phone to schedule a meeting and we had to reschedule or couldn't make it happen. Uh, how many times do your prospecting meetings get canceled or rescheduled? I don't know. I would say 25% of the time. Okay. Anywhere between, I hear reps saying anywhere between 20 to 50% of the time, right? Depending on the product, the technology, the service, uh, the, 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 the transaction volume, uh, high, high ticket item, non-high non ticket item. So anywhere between 20 to 25%. If it's 10%, fine. It still applies. Okay. Now, what happens is uh, out of those 20 to 25% that they get canceled or rescheduled, how many of them actually might not ever get rescheduled? Yeah. And this is what happens is with salespeople, we work really, 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 really hard, really hard to get these meetings. Our goal and what management should be measuring us by is not how many freaking cold calls you made. That's old school. That's old school sales productivity. It's not by how many emails you sent out. That's old school mentality, right? We're in a modern age. We care about how many times you freaking talk to somebody. How many conversations are you having? Because there is a direct correlation between the number of times that you speak to somebody. Now I'm talking about a, a tweet. I'm not talking about a LinkedIn message. I'm talking about actually pick up the phone and talk to somebody. There is a direct correlation between the number of times you speak to somebody where you're building face-to-face -face relationships just like this to the amount of opportunity that's gonna enter into your funnel. And if those meetings that we schedule get canceled or rescheduled and, and or we're trying to work with the client to be able to get them back on the books, here's what I know. That sometimes and oftentimes we can't reschedule them. But if we have them in our LinkedIn network, if we have them following us on Twitter, if we have them as a YouTube subscriber or maybe we've connected them on Snapchat or Facebook or whatever the, whatever the, the venue is that we've connected with them, Maybe it's in multiple spots. What I do know is that if we can't schedule that meeting, that if they're active on, on these networks, then if I'm regularly, regularly, excuse me, publishing content yeah. that maps to my buyer's journey, that feeds them information, valuable insights that helps them solve business problems, mm -hmm. you as a salesperson will be remembered 
when they have a specific need that needs to be addressed. And I easily, easily get one to five cold messages that are sent to me from somebody who's been in my network for 10, 11, 12 months, longer, a year. I just had uh, last month, I had somebody who had been in my network for about a year and a half. And this individual reached out to me, said, I know we haven't spoken. I know we connected about a year and a half ago. I've been watching what you're doing. Uh, I'd love to talk to you about how you can help our sales organization. I'm very impressed. I've watched almost everything that you do and I've been keeping tabs. Well, heck, I didn't know that, right? I didn't know that, but I'm feeding my network valuable content and all of a sudden opportunity now arose and there's a need. And I'm right there to be able to pick up that phone because they'll remember me over the guy or gal who uh, has not connected with them on LinkedIn because they didn't have, quote unquote, the first meeting yet. So they didn't feel comfortable connecting with somebody without having a first meeting. Or maybe they did connect, but they're not feeding their network valuable content. Does that make sense? Yeah, it completely resonates with me. I mean, just the other day, we had a customer who signed up for a trial over two years ago. And since two years passed, it was silent. They didn't engage with us at all. And all of a sudden, they purchased out of nowhere. And I was like, what was it? And he's like, well, I subscribed to your blogs. I follow you on Facebook. I'm still getting regularly getting the content. And now I have the need and like, you know, you're front and center. And so it was like that. So, I mean, that's like a similar scenario, of course. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Congratulations. And what you just described is exactly what I'm describing. And this is where I, I talk about, you know, the sales reps are, oh, my customers aren't on social. Well, they're, they're, not, they're not involved. They're not engaged. I can't find them. Well, maybe not. But guess what? I, they're taking this to the bathroom with them. They're looking up something. And it's not just texting. And it's not just sending love messages back home to whoever it is that they're talking to, right? It is they're looking for information and they are actively active on many of these different networks and or blogs and or what, uh, checking with their, with, their, with their network. So fabulous, congratulations, fabulous job. And you, you, you hit the nail on the head in terms of exactly what I just described. And I just wanted to also add that ever since you gave me that feedback, I really took it to heart. And I'm like, this simple thing has like changed everything. Because even when I go to networking events, in advance, if I know who's attending, I have been like tweeting at them or connecting on LinkedIn. Say, I look forward. Hopefully, we can run into each other at the networking event. And even if I don't end up connecting directly because it's just too many people, I always follow back. So I was like, sorry, you know, can't believe really we missed each other, but it's another way to engage again. So yeah. it's really so yeah, very good. And 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 actually, people don't, um, you know, um, people don't. Uh, get offended when you say, Hey, I want to, you know, I'm, as an example in the event, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you, hopefully find you there. I want to be able to have, so you have a face to a name and look for me. Let's go ahead and connect on LinkedIn because they can see your picture. Right. So like, like that is that, that that's non salesy. It's non pitchy. It's non like let's connect. And then I'll, I turn around and I send you a sales pitch after that. Right. It is networking. It's exactly what we would do when in the old days, we'd go to a networking event, we'd shake their hand, we'd grab the business card, we'd follow up, and you know, we're, but now this is virtual. So how do you take that concept of, vir of networking face-to-face -to, -face to a virtual environment? And what you just said, Carol, is money. That, that, by the way, if I gave you that advice, um, you owe me money. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but great job. I mean, that's, 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 that's exactly what you should be doing. And I think sales reps need to watch what you're doing at lead feeder to be able to see how you guys are really bringing that to how you're, how, who you're working with and how you're leveraging that. But more importantly, some of the insights that your tool also provides back to marketing as well as the salespeople. And I didn't mention lead feeder as a tool, but we definitely have utilized it. And it's impressive that I get to actually see the company that is literally looking at my website, how many pages, how long do they stick around? And then I can narrow that down to go, I can turn around, go back to my LinkedIn profile, go see who my target market might be, because that's usually who they will be looking at my services, right? Go find those and who am I connected to and start putting a marketing campaign that, that goes after that individual person possibly. And I have some very unique tips uh, that uh, we've wrapped around the lead feeder program um, that uh, I think people would, would, would really enjoy at some point in the future. Awesome. Yeah. You know, now that we're having this conversation, you mentioned lead feeder, it just dawned on me. It could actually be part of the social selling toolbox because Absolutely. you can see within the platform who's visiting from Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, and you just match it back to the actual person. It's great. Yeah. <laughs>
Awesome. Absolutely. Still a selling tool now too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's part of your, your, you know, your, your core, your core uh, functionality and uh, the things that you need as a salesperson. And what we need is, you know, the challenge with salespeople is we get a lot of data. But sometimes that data is not so good. Uh, and so I'm a subscriber to you. You try to get the data that you need, but also you create your own data, right? I mean, at the end of the day, uh, if marketing is producing 30% of your leads, that's pretty darn good. If they, it's more than that and it's 50%, that's amazing. But the reality is you walk into most sales organizations and most sales organizations uh, are having to create about 50% or more of their own sales pipeline. So the fact that we have had these tools that have only been in the hands of marketers and not in sales like lead feeder or one mob.com or um, sales navigator or any of these other tools um, is, and it's now available to us. I mean, it's, 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 it's the money ticket item for, for a salesperson.